No, it's not the pizza guy, it's the Mormons. I don't want to talk to them. I run into the bathroom and I crouch behind the door. There's a knock at the front door. My boyfriend Brian gets up to answer it. He is six foot three, wearing a wife beater and sweatpants. He opens the door. <sighs> Can I help you? We're from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're here to speak with Janine. Is she home? Brian closes the door. Are you sure you don't want to talk to them? <laughs> I'm sure. Just make them go away. I was afraid that if I talked to them, they would persuade me to change my mind, and I'm the kind of person that can't say no. I was born into Mormonism. Growing up, I tried to live the perfect Mormon life. When I was eight years old, it was easy for me to tell the bishop, yes, I want to be baptized. As a teenager, I participated in baptisms for the dead. I was a Molly Mormon. You know, that weird girl who wore really long shorts, modest tops, and asked you not to swear around her? <laughs> Back then, I believed. I knew the church was true, until I didn't. At my grandmother's funeral, my sister had simply asked me what I thought happened after we die. No one had ever asked me that before. No one had ever asked me to think for myself. I had always been given the answers to life's big questions. Suddenly, all of these doubts about my faith started to bubble to the surface. I went off to college, and I relaxed my standards. One sin led to another, and the dominoes began to fall. I drank caffeine. I drank wine coolers. I was having premarital sex. I went from being a Molly Mormon to the whore of Babylon. By the time I was 22, I was divorced. I was a college dropout, and I was living in sin with my new boyfriend. That night, we had just ordered a pizza and picked up a movie from Blockbuster. When I heard a car door shut outside, I looked out the window to see if it was the pizza guy. Instead, I saw two very clean-cut, middle-aged men in dark suits. One of them was holding a black leather-bound book. I recognized it as a combination Bible and Book of Mormon, similar to the one collecting dust on my closet. I panicked. Just make them go away. Why? Because they're going to make me go to an excommunication trial, and they're going to accuse me of apostasy, and I'm going to have to defend myself in front of a panel of Mormon elders. Brian sighs, and I can hear him roll his eyes. He opens the door. I'm sorry, I, she doesn't want to come to the door. Oh, well, we received her letter, and we just stopped by to talk to her about it. One of the men told Brian his name and said, I'm a friend of the family. This was not good. I didn't know this man, but I knew my mom did, and would he tell her about this? I wasn't ready to tell my family I was leaving Mormonism. It would crush my mom. A few weeks before, I received an invitation in the mail from the Mormon church to attend a local pancake breakfast. I had no idea how they got my address. Either my devout mother was providing it to them, or the Mormons knew where I was at all times, and that was really creepy. I knew that unless I formally resigned from the church, they would persist in trying to bring me back into the fold. I had to take action. I searched Alta Vista, the Google of the day, how to leave Mormonism. The first website that came up was exmorg.org. 
Morg is a combination of Mormon and cyborg. I opened the link with instructions on how to resign, and my eyes got big as I read through the multi-step process on how to resign. Filing for divorce in Texas was easier than this. I typed up a letter based on the instructions, and I included specific phrases such as, I understand this cancels the effects of my baptism. The letter had to be notarized. It had to be sent via priority mail with delivery confirmation to the Salt Lake City member records office. I waited. Now the website said that a few things might or might not happen before my resignation was official. I might receive a pamphlet in the mail urging me to reconsider. I got the pamphlet. I might be vi visited by local church leaders. I might be asked to attend an excommunication trial. But the website conceded that the last two things were fairly unlikely, but... Brian closed the door a little. He said he's a friend of the family. I heard I still don't want to talk to them. Why was leaving the church so hard? <sighs> Brian opens the door again. I don't know what to tell you. She still doesn't want to come to the door. Uh, hey, large pepperoni. Oh, God, Papa John's was involved now. <laughs> Brian stood holding the hot pizza in the doorway with the two Mormons still standing there. Uh, well, thanks anyway. Please tell her we stop by and she can come talk to us anytime. Okay, good night. Brian shuts the door and locks it. They're gone. Pizza's here. A few weeks later, I received a letter in the mail confirming that I was no longer officially a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But it turns out that hiding in the bathroom from the Mormons isn't the hard part. My family is still Mormon, most of them. And I still get angry when the church makes decisions that I don't agree with. Last week, something happened, and I took my anger out on my family. They still believe. I didn't respect that. I was an asshole. After I quit the church, I joined a liberal Unitarian church to help me through my transition. I needed to fill the void of community. I needed answers to life's big questions about what I believed and how I wanted to live my life. More importantly, I needed to know how to order a beer without looking like an idiot. <laughs> it's still a struggle. <laughs> I took a class on how to write a personal credo. Answered life's, the questions that one would answer to what you believe and how you want to live your life. I was asked to deliver it in a Sunday service. It was pretty short, but it boiled down to four words. Live, learn, respect, inspire. I just need to practice what I preach. Thank you.